Now, corned beef, cabbage, potatoes around this time of year are a staple right around St. Patrick's Day. This year for St. Patrick's Day, I'm doing something a little different. There is going to be corned beef and cabbage and potatoes, but I'm going to be making corned beef meatballs with coal cannon. Now, coal cannon, if you're not familiar with it, it is a sort of mixture of mashed potatoes and cabbage. I do it a little different and it's fantastic and it's going to go great with these corned beef meatballs. So let's get our meatballs going first. So our corned beef meatballs are going to be a mixture of corned beef and ground beef. It's actually going to be a three to one mixture. This is a three pound point cut corned beef. We're also going to be adding a pound of ground beef to our mixture for the meatballs. But the first thing I got to do is break this down into smaller pieces for grinding. I'm not going to do any trimming or anything. I want that fat. Now you could also do this with a flat cut corned beef. It doesn't really matter. So I just want these pieces kind of, you know, the size are going to go down through my grinder. So about like that. And there we go. Let's get our grinder out here. Now my grinder pieces have been in the freezer actually for several hours. They are nice and frosty. That's really important when you're grinding. You want that meat to be cold. You want your grinder to be cold. It just helps prevent any bacteria from developing. I'm gonna use a large plate. Hopper in. Now I could switch to a smaller plate after the first grind, but I may just run it through a second time on the same plate or it may be fine. I'll just look at it and see. All right, it's gonna get loud. I'm not gonna do much talking. Let's just grind up this corned beef. That's looking good. Now I'm gonna pop this in the refrigerator for a minute because I wanna show you a trick that I showed on another grinding video a long time ago that my mom taught me. In the grinder, you have all this residue kind of leading up to the cutting plate and she would just take a piece of old bread, put it in there and help push it through. that bread will grab onto a lot of the fat and it makes cleaning this up a lot easier later. But now we're gonna move on to mixing our meatballs and building them and getting them in the oven. Now I could have done more of a grind, like I said, but I think I got a good grind straight out of there. That grinder, it has the cutting attachment inside. Some people leave that cutting attachment off and just do a straight push through grind and you get the longer strands, but this actually cuts it and I like it like that. So now I'm gonna add a pound of 80-20 ground beef and before I add my egg and my breadcrumbs, I want to break this down and mix it together a little bit. Let me get that ground beef distributed in here. I'm going to add one egg, and I've got a cup of breadcrumbs ready. I'm going to start with about half of that. And we'll see how the mixture feels if we need to add more. Yeah, I can already feel it's gonna need more breadcrumbs. We're gonna go with the full cup today. Now I don't wanna overwork this, but I wanna make sure everything is mixed well and our ingredients are incorporated. I don't want dry lumps of breadcrumb. All right, let's start forming our meatballs. Now to roughly measure out the amount I want in each meatball, I'm just using my ice cream scoop here. So really this is just to get that amount into my hand. And I do want these to be on the large size because these are gonna be part of a dinner. So about like that, not quite tennis ball size. Man, these smell good. 
It is corned beef I'm smelling here. Right about now, your oven should be preheating to 350 degrees. And I'm gonna cook these to an internal temperature that I like of 155 to 160. Recommended temperature is 165 degrees for ground meat. And corned beef, even though you can cook that the whole cut to like 145-ish, because this is ground, you need to go a little further to be a little safer. And to me, I've found that 155 to 160 gets it to a really good taste, a good texture. And that's just with regular meatballs. I've never made these before. This is one of those ideas I thought, hey, let's make some corned beef meatballs. How many are we going to end up with? I guess there is a way to just do the math on it, but, you know, I'm not always exact. Looks like we're going to get 12, roughly the same size. All right. These are going into my 350 degree oven. I want them, like I said, to get to about 155 to 160 doneness. I'm gonna check them in 30 minutes to see where they're at. Really every oven is different, so you've gotta check them based upon your oven. So it could be 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. I find that it usually takes somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour at 350 to do meatballs. These are a little different because there's corned beef here, so we'll have to see. I'll just be checking them after 30 minutes and then gauging the time that's needed after that. To get started with our coal cannon, I have three pounds of an Idaho gold potato here that I've boiled up until they are just nice and tender. And if you notice, the skin is on them. I prefer to have my mashed potatoes rustic. Now, what does rustic mean? Well, you have a couple choices. One definition can be you want it more natural, less refined. You want to leave it as close as possible to what you began with. The other definition can be you really just didn't want to peel the potatoes, so you did it this way. I'm kind of in the middle there, but I really like the flavor of skin on potatoes when you mash it, except maybe for russet potatoes. Those I really do prefer to peel most of the time, but for these, this is terrific. So let's go ahead and get these mashed up and then we're gonna get our cabbage ready. So I wanna break these down before I add any of my other ingredients. Got my top camera here is getting all steamed up. Now to this, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Just wanna work those pieces around so they start to melt in this nice hot pile of potatoes. I'm also gonna add some half and half here. Now you could use milk, but I like half and half because it's a little bit creamier. Now I'm gonna start with a quarter cup and I can add more if I need to. We're gonna about half of this half cup right here. Part of this is just deciding how creamy you like your potatoes. Some people like them more creamy than others. I'm not a super creamy person. I like them a little bit chunkier, but I do want them a little bit more smooth than this. So we're gonna add a little bit more of our half and half here. I also wanna add half a cup of some chopped scallions. Now there are thousands of recipes for Colcannon. They vary based upon family, tradition, everything. Some people put bacon in them. This is my recipe. If you make Colcannon, drop your recipe down in the comments. I'd like to see what you add. We're gonna add a really good pinch of kosher salt here. Maybe two. Let's get a quick taste. really good needs a little more salt not a lot all right i'm going to cover this bowl and we're going to head over to the stove and we're going to make up our cabbage to add to this so we have cool cannon now i have the same pan that i boiled the potatoes in i just drained the water out and i'm going to add a tablespoon of unsalted butter got it over medium high heat right now. To this I'm going to add half of a head of cabbage that I've chopped up. Using the sauteing method instead of boiling, I think it gives you some really nice flavor. You get a little bit of caramelization on the cabbage. Want to add a good pinch of kosher salt, good pinch of pepper. 
We're gonna let that saute for a minute and then we'll put the lid on and let it finish. All right, we're gonna put the lid on and we'll come back in a couple minutes and give it a check. All right, we've been going a few minutes. Let's see how we're doing. Oh yes, you can see some of that browning on there. And even on the bottom, that nice fond that's developing. You want these to feel as tender as you want your cabbage. If you want it mushy, cook it longer. But to me, this is perfect. Let's get this into our potatoes. Want to mix our cabbage in here and create the cold cannon. I may add a little bit more half and half here to thin this out just a little bit. Oh, this smells great already. There. A little bit more half and half here. Let's get a little taste here. That is good. Doesn't need anything else. But again, you have to adjust for flavor here if it needs it, so make sure you taste it. All right, I'm gonna cover this. It's still nice and hot. And our meatballs are gonna be done in just a few minutes. Let me tell you, these are smelling pretty darn great right now. They took about 50 minutes in my oven. Your oven could be different. You gotta take it to that temperature that you decide upon. I took it to 155. They temped out at 156 when I checked them, so they probably rose another couple degrees, 158-ish, but they are looking good to me. Let's go ahead and plate some up with our coal cannon. I'm gonna get a bed of coal cannon on here. Now for some meatballs. I think we'll go with maybe three on here. Now I want to top my corned beef meatballs with just a dollop of some Coleman's hot mustard. You don't have to do this, but I really like this mustard with corned beef, so I think it's going to be terrific on these. Just a little dollop there. And there we go our corned beef meatballs on top of a bed of coal cannon. I can tell you this smells and looks great and I am hungry, so let's dive in. All right, I'm just gonna go right in here. I'm gonna go first just with the meatball. That's a corned beef meatball. That is so good. Now, one thing to remember is, this is why you have to check temperature because the pinkness in there might make you think, oh my God, it's not cooked. That corned beef is going to have a pink tint to it because of the curing. So temperature in this is important to check. And I think I cooked these just right. Let's get a little bit of our coal cannon here. Coal cannon is just sort of a really nice, warm, comfort food. The mixture of the potatoes and the cabbage goes great together. And you can add other things to it. Like I said, some people put bacon. There's just lots of variations. You got to find the one that's your own. But for me, especially when paired with the meatballs, this is terrific. 